Hello, I'm Dr. Spaulding, and I'm a practicing podiatrist since 1998 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm CEO of MediNail Learning C Center, providing some of the online training for podiatrists, nail technicians, cosmetologists, and medical assistants, and even registered nurses since 2006. This podcast today showcases a product that I have the highest regards for as an exceptional EPA disinfection agent. I have personally used this product for years with every single patient I have seen with superior results, not only as the most powerful disinfectant in the, uh, on the market, but I've been using it off-label for as an antiseptic. And I'm talking about thousands of patients without a single serious issue. And I'm privileged today to have Jake Piccoli, I'm sorry, um, did I pronounce that right? Uh, Piccoli. 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 <laughs> of Clean Republic. He is the director of sales. So thank you, Jake, for taking your time out today to do this. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. Well, um, can you give me a brief history of Clean Republic and where you want to additionally penetrate the hypochlorous market in other markets? Absolutely. So Clean Republic um, this actually has kind of a, a, a fairy tale story. We were originally founded, um, kind of had the idea for the company in March of 2019, soft launched in October of 2019, then formally launched January of 2020. And I think everybody knows what, what came roaring uh, in about uh, March of 2020 with the, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic. So we went from a, you know, a teeny little company that was trying to get into the, what I like to call or refer to as the alternative chemical space. So finding less toxic, i.e. healthier, um, you know, chemical solutions to some of the other, you know, more traditional things on the product, uh, excuse me, on the market. And so Clean Republic, you know, and and we, I'm sure we're going to get into the chemistry, but um, we thought, hey, we could, we could make some, some change for the positive. And we, we launched the company and frankly, um, it was, it was a quite a wild journey getting through the pandemic, you know, it's kind of like, selling bullets in a war um, when you're selling disinfectant during a pandemic. But, you know, as the company sits today, um, we actually merged with a larger company called Bioplanet International. Uh, they are uh, the world leader in electrostatic sprayers and, you know, spray manufacturing. And, and with that and combining it with our solution, and there's some other stuff that we we, we do, some other chemistries that we have, but, but it's really trying to be a uh, an infectious disease control, um, you know, specialist, and you know that's that's kind of where where we sit today. And you know, just in terms of where we're looking to go, I mean, you kind of hit it on the head. You know, hypochlorous acid, um, and again, I I'm assuming you're going to tee me up for another question here where we can talk a lot about the chemistry, but what you realize is that disinfecting is one of the many things that this amazing chemistry can can do so whether or not it's in the veterinarian space or uh you know why we're talking here today getting more into using this as an antiseptic or some kind of a you know a wound cleansing agent um you know the there's a lot of kind of green green space ahead of us so so why why is hypochlorous acid such a good product for podiatry offices and salons? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great question. So hypochlorous acid or HOCL, which is the chemical ticker, um, it's it's just salt water run through an electrolysis process. It's actually the infection fighting compound in the human white blood cell. So literally, as we're talking right here, um, you know, today, our bodies are naturally producing HOCL to help out fight bacteria, viruses, um, and other things. So, you know, whether or not it's, you know, in the salon or, you know, podiatry office, you know, I really like uh, this solution where you're around patients, right? So you're spraying in, you know, close proximity, you're, you're, you're spraying quite frequently, um, but you need something that uh, has a very, I would say, low toxicity profile, yet is highly effective. And that's what you get with hypochlorous acid um, as a disinfectant. And like you alluded to before, using it for some of these off-label uh, uh, uses that some some folks do. Well, thank you. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Can you tell me more about why hypochlorous acid has such a high kill claim for the tough sporicidal bacteria like C. diff? Yeah, no. So 
um, hypochlorous acid, it's an, it's an oxidizer. So what's happening there is it's actually uh, killing the bacteria or the virus at the cellular level. So once, you know, any kind of nasty little bug comes in touch with HOCL, you're going to get a full, you know, a, you know, 99.99999% kill on whatever it is. And so, you know, not every bacteria and virus is the same. Um, you know, the way that the EPA regulates this stuff is basically we will go in, we'll, we'll do a test on a specific uh, bacteria or virus. We'll see what that kill time was. And then we take that information, submit it back to the EPA. Well, they'll validate it. So, you know, kill claims, they can range depending on what it is that you're, you're targeting um, anywhere from 30 seconds to 10 minutes. Now, 10 minutes is very much a, um, you know, when you start to get into things like, you know, hospital tools, right? Like things that are coming in touch with you know, some directly with some pretty nasty stuff, but like taking COVID, for example, we have a 60 second well, dwell time or kill time is what, what we refer to it as. So it's, it kind of ranges a bit, but you know, overall uh, as an oxidizer, oxidizer, HOCL just does a great job. Can you tell me why this product is such a better agent than the quaternary ammonium compounds? Yeah. <laughs> you know, quats are, they're funny because, you know, unfortunately, 90, about 95% of the, the cleaning and disinfecting agents, um, you know, on the shelves today, they are quaternary ammonium com compounds. Um, now, they're so prevalent, in my opinion, um, because of the, you know, they, they are useful. They've been around forever. They're inexpensive. Um, they're what the big boys have all kind of hitched their wagons to. And frankly, they hitched their wagons to them a long time ago before a lot of, uh, kind of the data that I'll explain to you here in a second came out, but, you know, COPD, lung cancer, asthma, infertility, they're all being linked back to quats. And, you know, I have to kind of say that this, whenever I make that comment, I, I, I want to contextualize it a little bit because obviously it's like a lot of people go, well, I've. You know, I've had that quad under my counter for, for, for years and I'm fine. And I say, yeah, but, you know, go look at asthma rates today, right? It's like one in, one in every four, fourth person is dealing with asthma. We know where cancer is at in this country, infertility. So it's like, you know, it's kind of a little bit of just peeling back, you know, the, the, the mentality a little bit and going, oh, okay, you know, I'm like, this is one of those things that I come in contact with so frequently, but I just don't think about it. Um, and I think the pandemic, you know, there was, it was obviously a nasty thing, but you know, there was good things that did come out. So like better chemistry, for example, better cleaning practices, better disinfecting practices and HOCL, I'd, I'd say really, um, is, is one of those, you know, especially when you kind of relate it back to quats. Well, I, I have to agree. Um, after 25 years of being in this business, it has been the single best disinfection agent I've ever come across with the low risk factors. And, and, and I've really found no contraindications for it. Uh, it does such, such a better job. Can you explain what parts per million are recommended for what purposes and what differentiates uh, it seems to be a little confusing it, 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 because it seems like even at low concentrations, it can still kill some of these high end bacteria, but yet um, it's, it's designated for different parts per million for different jobs. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's a, uh, a really good question and so important to understanding HOCL overall. So you know, to give a little bit of background here, so so basically what you're referring to is the parts per million. So how how strong um, is your hypochlorous acid solution, right? So um, one of the challenges with HOCL over time is that the product does degrade. So what happens is you'll take your salt water, you're running it through an electrolysis process, and you'll make hypochlorous acid. This has been around since like World War One, World War Two was when it was first kind of more prominently used. They were using it on the battlefield for post-surgical wound healing and cleaning. Um, it was a it was a rubbing alcohol uh, and hydrogen peroxide alternative. Now, when that first started getting produced, uh, you could make it quite easy, but after twenty four to forty eight hours, it would just basically turn back into salt water. So this there's been a long history of us progressing the technology and progressing the technology in order to get it to where you have a shelf stable solution. 
So a reason I tell you all of that is because the way that the EPA looks at this is they say, as a disinfectant, your solution needs to be over 338 parts per million of hypochlorous acid. And that's a really strong concentration, but what they're really giving you some leeway for is they're saying, hey, this stuff, if you make it stronger and you and you plan for some degradation of the product over time, then that's how you get your shelf life. So um, 338 parts per million is where, um, you know, we do all of our testing at. That's what the EPA had. That's They basically set the standard there. But, you know, that's our disinfectant. You look at our all-purpose cleaner, which we don't necessarily make any kill claims on, but it's still an amazing cleaning product. That's at 100 parts per million. You know, Dr. Spalding, you and I have had some kind of, you know, conversations about where you're using it for some of these other uses. And again, it's it's really more so in that 100 parts per million uh, range is where you're getting a lot of effectiveness. Um but it's, again, it's just kind of that 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 give and take. And one thing that I want to also say here to kind of contextualize this conversation is actually bleach is regulated and frankly functions in a very similar manner as HOCl. You'll still produce it at a high concentration, and there'll be you know some degradation in the solution over time. And you know the the EPA makes us put on our labels what's called a deterioration claim, and that just sucks and says, hey, you know over time you'll you'll see this you know this uh, this solution sort of lose some strength. But of course, if it's over that three hundred thirty eight parts per million as a disinfectant, for example, then then you're still fine. So all of that being said. It's a range. I mean, you know, interestingly enough, and this isn't a this isn't a claim, but you know, having some fun in the lab, we've seen or I've seen um, hypochlorous acid at fifty parts per million taking out C diff in about thirty seconds, which is just like incredible. Now we're not there from a regulatory perspective yet, but it's like if you get it in a lab setting, you can start to really see some of the power of of, of HOCl. And that's that's excellent information because you know. Whether they realize it or not, they're dealing with um, enteric bacteria or GI bacteria. Every time you take a bath or a shower, uh, that bacteria is going to come by gravity down to your feet. And since yeah. that's where we are really focused on is feet, um, the all the GI bacteria, the C, uh, C. diff, the E. coli, and the Enterococcus faecalis, all of those are rapidly killed by your product. And uh, that's one reason why I like it. In fact, I can't think of any other material other than your hypochlorous acid your, your, and the way you presented it um, that, that not only works so well as a disinfectant, but uh, I, I've been using it off-label as an antiseptic and getting super results. Um, I have used it uh, off-label use on wound care open wounds, serious ulcers, dermatitis, redness, bleeding fissures, and, and then on every single routine foot care that I've uh, handled in the last uh, four years, they all get cleaned with that product before and after I do my services. And um, I, I do see where other FDA versions of this seem to be approved at around, like you said earlier, around 100 parts to 200 parts per million. And is there anything you can say in general about skin use, not necessarily about your EPA registered product in general? Like you said, it was used all the way back since World War I on these uh, on these types of issues. Yeah, you know, well, one thing I will say to this is, is now that we're kind of having a fun conversation over here is like, you know, in the beginning, I used to say, man, the EPA, I really wish they would sort of, you know, reassess you know, the standard of which they've set, right? But now it's like, you know what? Holding everybody to this pretty, you know, this this high standard and this this quality insurance, it's like, that's their job, right? So I I, I very much um, am, 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 am sort of, you know, kind of, I'm, I see where they're at. And I say that as to say, it's now up to us, you know, as private companies to push, the needle on this thing, right? To say, hey, here's the testing. Here's more testing. Here's a white paper done by, you know, we're doing some stuff right now, for example, um, you know, with the University of Georgia, you know, really looking at some interest, you know, some different uses for HSDL. The more data and the more studies, and even why I love working with you, Dr. Spalding, is because you have been basically testing this stuff for years now, and you've been, you know, 
bringing the value to the solution that we then need again as private companies to go back over and say hey this is you know this is working and so what you'll what you alluded to before with these some of these other companies and other products saying hey here's our skin wash or our wound cleanser and you know they're at 100 parts per million I, I, you know, I, I don't want to say that's them tiptoeing around the regulatory requirements, but, you know, a wound cleanser, like what, what does that actually mean, right? Like, what is that? And so when people then go a little further to understand what that means and what that chemistry and that science is based in, then, you know, I think people can get comfortable and consumers are smart these days. We've got a lot of access to a lot of information and you can, you know, you can determine what you want to use on your own body. I know me personally, I mean, I carry a little 3.4 ounce bottle with me everywhere that I go and I'll spray anything and everything, you know, because I'm, I'm a believer, right? Like I, I've seen the power um, and I've made the, you know, I've made the choice to put this into my, my body and, and, and around my family and all the rest of it. Um, but I've, I've educated myself and I, you know, and, and that's where, how I've gotten to that place. So I just would encourage others who are, you know, saying, Hey, don't, take it for our word, try it, right? <laughs> like put it to the use and, you know, dive into some of the white papers. There's some great information out there, some really, really in-depth studies. And, um, you know, it's, it's HOCL is, it's coming a long way. And I think the future is really bright for anybody who's kind of associated with it in one way or the other. Uh, well, I fully agree with what you said on uh, the future of this product, because I just see upwards direction in so many different areas. And, Thank you so much. You've answered so many of my questions, but I had a couple of questions that my advisory board wanted to to put out. And um, one of the ones uh, is from Erin uh, Beckett Gland. She's my vice uh, president in Medinail. And the question she had was, I want the uh, what I want is the chemical activity, the different strengths of hypochlorous acids compared to the different levels of disinfection. Which level does it sit at and how long does it need to stay wet to have a disinfection activity? Who is it recognized by? And the FDA, EPA, or CDC, they're all on the same page and they don't seem like they're all on the same page and a little misleading. And I think you've answered this question already, but just in general, um, what what would you be your best uh, answers to help clarify her concerns about the different levels of disinfection. Um, I think you've done a good job already, but I just want to make sure that she understood. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And like you said, we've kind of touched on it, but you know, what I always say is, and people don't always want to do this, but read the label <laughs> because all the directions that you need are on there. Um, you can also go onto our website. You can pull that specific contact time, kill time sheet that I, that I talked to you. So if there was anything in specific that you were looking at to see what the dwell time is, um, you know, the other thing is that, you know, part of the reason that clean Republic or a big part of the reason, frankly, that clean Republic merged with BioPlanet international is because when you take our HOCL and you take an electrostatic sprayer and you go into your office facility or your house or whatever it is that you're looking to disinfect, you can cover, I mean, a massive amount of square footage really quickly, saving on chemistry consumption. And what electrostatics does is it actually, it charges the particle of our chemistry. And so what that, what that does is you'll get kind of a wrapping coverage and then the liquid itself doesn't pool. So why is that important when we're talking about kind of 12 times and uses and all the rest of it? It's because we'll go in with electrostatic sprayer, we'll get every square inch of that room, and then you're done. There's no wiping required. You don't have to do anything else, and you can rest assured that you've actually done what you want, want to do. So I think that's piece one of this question. I heard this kind of EPA, F, FDA, you know, aspect as well. And what I will say here is that our disinfectant, is designed for hard surfaces, right? So this is a hard surface disinfectant registered and regulated by the, the EPA. Um, so we're only looking at what does, you know, what, what does it do? What does our solution do when it comes in contact with a bacteria or virus on a hard surface? That's all EPA world. And then frankly, you got to also then go register the product with all 50 states with their Department of Pesticide Regs. So 
There's actually a lot of, a like, few more layers of this beyond the EPA. Now, the FDA is where you're going to get into skin and basically, you know, human uses, right? So um, there's kind of two parts to it. One would be, hey, you have to, you're registering this product and you're saying, hey, it's, you know, I'm going to make these kill claims on it. And that's a full registration. Um, you know, at this point, it's probably a couple of year process and <laughs> some big dollar signs associated with that. Um, but what you will see is other companies that are basically, they have an FDA registered facility, which is not hard. You just got to make sure that it's in compliance with some of their things. And, uh, and, and then you're, they're not making any kill claims. So again, it would just say a wound cleanser or a foot cleanser or something, something to this effect. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's extremely helpful to hear in that in those terms, because um, um, those are questions I'm sure that a another hundred people had based on that one. And one yep. other question that uh, one of my um, uh, advisory board uh, committees is, is, uh, is the use of uh, hypochlorous acid on the surface of leather or the salon pedicure chairs and the manicure chairs. Will it discolor, say, towels if it gets on them? Yeah. Now, um, it's a really kind of, um, I would say it's a, it's a gentle solution, right? So, you know, you're not going to see really any kind of like deterioration or anything like that. I mean, you'd have to be using a ton of solution, kind of soaking, you know, soaking this stuff and, you know, at a, at a pretty high frequency for, um, for any kind of real deterioration to come in. That being said, it is still a liquid, right? So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, what happens if you spray water on your leather couch over and over, you're going to get kind of some of that, um, that, that, that looking, but this is another reason too, that, you know, I go, we go back to this electrostatic sprayer thing, because once you get those really small, fine particles and you get that perfect coverage, you don't really have to worry about there being too much liquid on the surface, um, of, of, of whatever it is. So, you know, with everything, you know, anything can happen, but I would, you know, it's like if you're using it in line with the directions and, you know, like you would just a normal disinfectant, uh, you're not going to, you're not going to have any challenges. And the other interesting bit I'll share here, um, and I, and I, cause I, I actually love this about HOCL is that, you know, when I keep saying it's salt water that goes through an electrolysis process, the amount of salt that is in our solution is actually um, less than or about comparable to rainwater on the West Coast of the United States. So um, it's it, it's very much similar to water. <laughs> well, I, I know that I've everything I've ever put it on, it is not damaged or faded. I use it to demonstrate almost every day on my scrubs that or blue scrubs like this blue shirt I've got on. And yeah. I've never seen any type of um, fading. But um, but in specifically, a lot of these materials are synthetics, as opposed to, say, leather that are on the salon pedicure chairs. And um, I, I would think that, I, as I've seen it, it's actually cleaned off some of the uh, repetitive um, oils that we see on our pedicure chairs from patient to patient that may have a lot of oil um, on their skin. So if anything, our chairs look cleaner than they did uh, before we started using them. And so I've yeah. been extremely happy with it and everything that you've resonated about it being um, sort of like a, almost like pH neutral for yeah. body contact and skin contact. And since it's made in the body, all of those are advantages that I just can't um, begin to outweigh compared to other products. And again, those were all I had today. And gosh, on a Sunday, I sure appreciate your time coming in and, and educating everybody because this is an education that's still a lot of um, issues associated with which disinfectant is the best disinfectant. And uh, surely in my uh, choices, it's going to be hypochlorous acid. And you yeah. guys have been excellent in educating people onto the use of this and how it can be beneficial. So many thanks for you today. Yeah, no, thank you. And obviously, um, you know, any questions, you know, our, our FAQ page on our website at clean-republic.com. Um, there's a ton more information there. You can always reach out. 
Um, I believe it's info at clean-republic.com or sales at clean-republic.com. Um, somebody can always respond. Um, but yeah, I mean, with that, I would just say, um, you know, to anybody who's on the fence about it, it's, you know, try it, right? And right. See, for, see for yourself, because that's the best way, um, you know, to, to, to really put it to the test is to get it into your house or your business. And, um, you know, and I can't stress, you know, I, I, anymore either that if you're looking for an application method, you know, electrostatic spraying is just like, it's just, it's, it's, it's an absolute game changer when you think about it from the application that you're getting, the time that you're saving and the cost on the actual chemistry. Um, it's just like, you know, when you talk about infectious disease control uh, <laughs> in a post pandemic world, this is the best system. And I'm, I guess I'm biased, but I haven't really seen anything quite like it. Well, you know, that's that's so true because there were so many things that came out that was supposed to be for COVID. And I've never seen anything that works as well as your systems. And that's a fantastic marriage you have with your electrostatic sprayer, because that is something everyone needs to consider uh, how to handle all these pandemics and their daily, daily use of um infection control in there whether it's a medical office or a salon or yeah. another type of retail outlet um you guys really have have captured a good uh, working relationship and i appreciate you getting to share that with everybody here today no well thank you for having me um you know anytime you want to do it again you just let me know thanks so much and enjoy your sunday